Alright, so... The next question from the uh, Team Fortress of TV uh, forum post was Should roamers off class and process last, or should they leave it to the scouts? Do you think pockets going heavy could work? Um, on process last, I think it's okay for the roamer to off class. Um, generally, I don't think the roamer is too... I mean, unless the enemy team has a sentry, I don't think you need the roamer's spam there that much. That said, they can still be really useful just as a distraction. Um, another example of something that Zebrian does uh, when we're pushing last is he'll just come do a skip jump over here and slide up that ramp. I mean, he does it better than me because he's not shit. But he can slide up that ramp and then get air and just land back here. So he goes from there to here in about half of a second. And then while he does that, we're pushing in over here. So the enemy team's like, oh fuck, they're Ubering there. Oh fuck, there's a rumor behind us. Uh, what do we do? And then we just hit him with the shit. And it's generally quite successful. Um, but that's not anything that's, you know, completely necessary. We can, we can do without it. Um, and if your, if your roamer's a good sniper, if he's a good spy, absolutely. You can have him, uh, you can have him do a suicide and change to that class and, uh, try to make things happen. Um... Okay. It's also, you know, perfectly fine for the scouts to do it. Really, I think this last point is just whoever is your best off-classer, whoever feels like they are confident making making that off-class work on a given night, uh, I think it's I think it's fine. Uh, as far as pocket going heavy, um, is that talking about pushing or defending? Mm, well. We didn't like mention, you know, like pushing or something, just like okay. in general. I mean, pushing, I personally would probably never go heavy uh, on the push. I'd be fine if one of our scouts went heavy, but I, I personally, as the pocket, would not go heavy. I think uh, my ability to rocket jump with the Uber and close distance is way too important. I would be far too slow coming up here, because then people would just get inside the spawn doors. Um, I mean, I suppose I could park myself on point and try to keep him out, but uh, I think the fact that I can rocket jump and close distance is too useful to uh, give up, but having a scout be heavy and like waddle in over here at the end of the uber is really nice. And like, what if you defend? Um, again, I would say probably not the pocket, because... Wrong spawn there. Yeah, that's what I got. Um, I don't know. You just you just kind of need you kind of need the mobility. Like this point is so big. If you're holding over here and they come in over there, and you want to engage them, if you're a heavy, you gotta just have to like waddle over here and start spinning up. If you're a soldier, you can just jump over here. I don't know. I mean, I guess heavy. I mean, I guess the pocket going heavy on defense could work. Uh, cause it. I guess it actually lets you retain more of your capping power. It lets you have two scouts, who can run out. Um and start capping instead of just one if you have one of your other scouts go heavy. Uh, it's something it's something I could see working, something that could be tried, uh, something that I'd be willing to try. Um, but for heavy pushing, uh, no. I'd say I'd rather have the scout do it. Defending, sure. Okay. Uh, then the next question is, what's the hardest class for you to deal with as a roamer or a pocket on process? Um, I think for either type of soldier on this map, it is scouts. Because the terrain is just, it's really conducive to letting scouts jump around and be in the air all the time, and really dictate the fights on their terms. Like, say God forbid you're standing down in this low spot, and you're fighting a scout. Every, you, yeah. si every single place in my field of view is a ledge higher up than me that the scout can stand on where I have to hit him with a direct. Or he can just keep double jumping around over my head and completely destroy me. Um, obviously that's like the worst example, but even mid, um, it's really easy for these scouts to get up on the high ground or to get up on this rock and then just be jumping around and be high up in the air all the time and force me to either hit an air shot or wait a really long time for me to hit a guaranteed splash rocket. And sometimes against scouts like, you know, Ruin, Enigma, YZ-50, sometimes if you keep waiting for a shot, they'll kill you before they give you one. 
Okay. Um, but de definitely scouts. The scouts are really hard, and for that reason, uh, whenever I'm fighting a scout, I generally frantically calm to my team scouts that I'm doing so, so that they can come, <laughs> so that they can come kill them for me. Okay, so that was it, I guess. Uh, the next question would be, where do you think soldiers stand on process in terms of effectiveness? Um, I mean, I'm really not sure what uh, what the pecking order is for effectiveness of the classes on this map. I definitely don't feel useless as a soldier on this map. Um, I, I, I say this is probably a better map for soldiers than, like, Snake Water. Snake Water can be pretty hard for soldiers. Um, I don't know, I usually feel like whenever I, I'm given an Uber, there's always a chance for me to do something productive with it. Um, and to that effect, to that to that end, I guess, um, that's really all I need for it to be a good pocket map, is for it to give me the ability to have good Ubers. And I think this is a phenomenal roamer map, just because of all the sloped surfaces that you can do really crazy um, rocket jumps off of. The roamer can be anywhere instantly, so I think it's a pretty good map for soldiers overall. I don't, I don't really know how it stacks up against soldiers and demos, though. Okay. Um, the next question: If you think uh, they're not effective, what changes could be made to the map to make them more effective? Hmm. I mean, I don't know. I the midpoint is kind of hard for me. Um, it feels like the midpoint is mostly <laughs> dictated by the scouts in the demo, but I mean that just might be my pocket soldier bias coming out. Uh, really, I don't think this map needs too many changes to make soldier more useful. Um, I think soldier is already okay on it. Um, can you share any favorite plays, like favorite jumps, general tips, and tricks or process? That might be useful, like for a room or a pocket. Yeah, um, this one I showed on my stream earlier, but I'll show mm -hmm. it again. Okay. Um, this is a jump that Z Brian does. That's like a skip jump. You know? Yeah, and it's just it sends you so far, and you have so many options. It can be used to stop a bat cap. It can be used to bomb a medic. It can be used just to catch up to your team really quickly. Uh, so that one's pretty sick. And the thing um, else. I mean, you can really kind of, like, the possibilities are kind of endless when it comes to this map. You can skip jump off of almost anything. Yeah, I think like, that's why this map is so original when it comes to, like, speed jumping, like, yeah. skip jumping, etc. Just, you know, like, you, you just have to be creative. <laughs> Especially for roamers, like Blaze, I think. He's very creative with his jumps. Yeah, I agree. Okay, um... See. Okay, so you Uber for choke from a mid to second. As a pocket, how far in do you chase for a pick? Um, I kind of talked about this uh, a little bit earlier, but generally what I would do is I would only chase up to the chokes. If I'm Ubering in as a pocket, I'll probably, I'll probably walk it for the first few feet just to kind of push the line forward and push the enemy team back. But then beyond that, I'm really only concerned about sealing off these chokes. I wouldn't chase anyone too far past here. I'm not going to chase people too far past this door. Uh, I'm not going to chase people too far over here. I just really am worried about killing people before they exit the chokes, or once they've exited the chokes, sealing them off. Yeah, so basically not going in like a retard, just dying, just, you know, playing safe. Yeah. If because we're pushing second, I'm yeah. not going to start pushing last, you know? Yeah. Because, like, you're a pocket, your, you know, mission is to get kills and to protect medic. Not, yeah. like, go in and die and let your medic die as well. Alright. Um, for off-classes on process, do you prefer the roamer or a scout or neither to off-class when pushing middle or, like, last? Um, well, for laser beams, I mean, Z Brian is just, he's really really useful to have on roamer and we have justin who is a strong off classer so i mean again i think that's just one of those things that depends on your team like if your roamer is the better off classer fine if your scout if one of your scouts is the better off classer that's fine uh i think you can make it work either way scouts and roamer are both pretty strong on this map so it's not like viaduct where you know sacrificing the roamer is probably better because scouts are so strong. 
Um, it's kind of a toss up on this map on who should off class. I think it just comes down to who, like what individual on your team is better at it. Okay. And people are asking like, uh, do you like have any specific hiding spots on process? Like, let's see if you, you were a roamer, yeah. Um, Where could people I don't, possibly hide? I don't know many, because I haven't really played Roamer on this map. This is one spot, but this gets checked pretty often. Um, I mean, hiding spots don't always have to be super sneaky. Like, if you know the enemy team is going to push in through choke, you can just stand up here, and chances are they won't see you, or they won't see you until it's too late. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there aren't that many like hiding spots. It's just all, all about the timing. Yeah, I mean, like, again, like like this. This isn't a particularly sneaky spot. Yeah, but, but if you time it perfectly, pushing, yeah. You can just completely destroy them. Okay, um... Uh, there actually, ooh, there's one really sneaky hiding spot that someone yep. used against me. Let's see if I can... I guess you can stand up here. Oh, yeah, I, you can I didn't stand up here. That. Yeah. And this is this is pretty brutal. Uh, the thing you have to watch out for, though, is if people check for stickies, they might see you. Yep. But I've been killed by this spot quite a few times. Yeah, that's a good spot, actually. Like, I didn't even notice it myself. Yeah. Definitely useful. Okay, so what does the roamer do when the other team is late or middle? Either as a strat or just like from a l lower division standpoint? What does the roamer do when the other team is late? Uh, what does the roamer do when the other team is late? Yeah, to middle. I mean, a, a good thing would just be take the enemy team's health kit. If the if the other team is late, you should just take their health kit immediately. And then uh, like abuse them and like spam them, so they don't yeah. even come to middle, and that's like a middle for you for free. Yeah, if, if your roamer is quick and their team is slow, he can take the health kit and put out some spam that makes them slow down. And really, he can just be aggressive and be like, hey, team, I'm holding them back, come up. And then you can pretty much instantly just start capping and keeping them out at the chokes. Okay. Um, as the roamer while pushing, do you usually follow the scouts around, or are you trying to do your own thing, like pushing up ahead of the team? Unfortunately, I'm, I'm again. I don't have too much experience on Roamer on this map, but I think what Z Brian generally tries to do is work with the scouts. He works with the scouts more than he works with uh, the combo, uh, because this map is so big and it's got so many flank routes that um, you know the Roamer either has to be watching his own flank or really helping the scouts out. Okay, so it, like, it depends on the ro roamer and scouts, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of really sort of depends on how your team has figured this map out. But the one thing that I can say for sure is that the roamer will probably almost never be with the combo. This map is too big and there's too many flank routes. He has to be watching one of them or going for a play. Okay. Um... Thoughts on Romer jumping into enemy's sewer or computer room? What do you think? Um, is this like for the initial mid fight, I assume? Uh, well, yeah, let's say like for a middle. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty good. Um, against the smart teams, it won't work that well. Like, hold on. You know, say you're a Romer and you come into mid and you're doing your thing. And you jump into the enemy team's uh, IT. And you're like, oh man, they're so distracted. I'm gonna come up behind them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill their medic. My team's gonna love me. It's gonna be great. And then you get here, and if the enemy team is smart, they'll just be up here killing your team. That said, it still works really often. Like, like we get killed by it all the time. Harblu, when we play against him, will just come back here, wait a couple seconds, and then as his team gets really aggressive, our blue just comes in from behind and shoots the ground four times and we all die. Yeah. And it's the same thing with going into sewers. Like, if you go in the sewer and just stand here, the enemy team is like, okay, he's coming soon, right? Alright, he's coming in a few seconds. Alright, we have to turn around because he's coming. And then they turn around and you're not there. And it's like, oh god, maybe he's not there. What is he doing? Someone go find him. 
And then while they're all confused, you just come out and kill everybody. Yeah, then it gets like all about the timing with, with, with your team. Yeah. Uh, um, it definitely is a very powerful distraction, so yeah, I think it's a good strat to use sometimes. Um, like, ideal entrance to push last. What does your team do, like, when you push last? Um, How would you describe your push? Generally, we prefer to push in through the lobby. One thing that I hate doing is I hate, hate, hate pushing in through this bottom left door. I hate it so much. Like, I've never had a good Uber coming in through here. Because, like, they just see you coming. There's this whole hallway that you can get spammed in. It's hard to clear these stickies. And, you know, there's this wall here and a ceiling, so it's hard to rocket jump anywhere, really. Uh, I just strongly dislike pushing in through this door. I almost never do it. If you know the enemy team is holding on the left side, pushing in through these bats is pretty good. It's relatively easy to clear the stickies because the doors are low. Shoot a rocket there, shoot a rocket there, and I'm probably okay. Um, I can get a really good jump right towards the door to seal them out or make their med pop. Um, if they back off quickly, I can jump straight to point and start capping it and put presence there. Um, and then while I'm in the air, I can shoot a rocket at the center of it to shoot all the stickies off, which lets my scouts cap and prevents me from dying. Um... But this is generally something I would only do if they're holding on the left. If they're holding on the far right, I wouldn't want to come in that way. Because they can just do this and make me pop, and there's nothing I can do to stop it. Okay. Um, I really like also kind of just chilling around here and trying to hit good spam. The nice thing about this area is that it gives you options for both sides. Say I hit two spam rockets on a scout over there. It's a really small health advantage, but if I know my team is buffed, I can be like, I, I just did a scout twice, let's go. And just jump in and get the kill, and suddenly we're Ubering 5v6. Yeah, but... Um, then again, like, it's up to the team, like... It has to be, like, a perfect timing once again. Yeah, the it's team all about has the calls to, as well, like... The team has to know that we're ready to go at a moment's notice. Um... It's kind of okay to clear stickies here. Like, you can just shoot that and be okay. You've got these pillars to shoot to help clear stickies. Um, and I don't know, it's generally pretty clean to get through here. Like, you're relatively safe while you're standing here, unless they get really close or have a sniper. And it's really easy to do a deep jump. So pushing from these main doors, right main and left main, are pretty good. Um, pushing down the far right here is something I generally avoid. If you push in on the far right and they're far left, you are fucked. Like, your Uber is almost certainly not going to be good. If they're holding up top, it can sometimes be okay, because, I don't know, it's quick to close the distance. Um, if you want to try to target their flank, it can be really good, because it's really easy to catch a scout or a sniper standing here. And since there's that wall there, there's kind of nowhere for them... Whoops. There's kind of nowhere for them to go, and you can kill them pretty easily. But generally, the, my preferences are left main, right main, and bats. All right. Um, right. The next question would be, uh, what should a pocket focus on? It, like on in training, deathmatch, MG, or L mod? What None of those. Just... Focus on scrimming. The most important thing on pocket is knowing how to Uber correctly, and knowing how to Uber correctly doesn't mean hitting all your shots. It means knowing when to use your Uber, where to go with it, how fast to go, how far should you rocket jump. When should you let someone else on your team take your Uber? When do you need to watch the flank? When do you need to know that a scout's gonna come kill your medic? You can't learn any of that from DM or MGE or ammo mod. Scrimming is the single best way. Yeah, so basically just playing like with our team or just trolling for a team is just the best experience for everyone, yeah. I guess. Actual 6v6 experience mm -hmm. is the best. There's no substitute. Okay. Uh, what about like ammo management in this map? Because I'm pretty sure that everyone like who has played this map knows that it's quite like a uh, difficult map when it comes to like ammo packs and etc. What's your yeah. opinion? Um, I definitely like it when my scouts can build Uber. Um, for many reasons. One being you know the ammo management aspect of it, and the other is that you know when the scouts building, I'm free to like spam chokes. Um, but, I mean, yeah, you have to be really careful with your ammo. 
Um, I'm not really sure what to say. I'm actually, I think I'm pretty terrible at ammo management. I'm kind of famous for always running out of ammo when we play Granary. Mm -hmm. Like, I just never have ammo on Granary, so... I don't know. Don't don't shoot all your rockets. Save a couple of them. Pro tips. That's all I got. Uh, what's the best position for the pocket to be during in the mid fight? I almost always try to get up top. Um, it's just a good place to stand. It lets me fight their scouts. It lets me have a better vantage point against uh, bombers. Um, if someone jumps me, I can just like counter jump pretty well. Uh, it lets me protect my medic from scouts much more easily. If I'm down here trying to protect my medic from a scout, it's pretty hard because this terrain's kind of weird. If I'm up here, I can just shoot my medic with rockets and protect them. Yeah, so basically it's all about uh, like height advantage. You should yeah, always get much, the height advantage. Pretty much these crates are my main focus as pocket on this map. Uh, and if I see an opportunity to be aggressive, I get more aggressive. Maybe take the health kit and push them out. Uh, if I need to protect my medic, I turn around and protect my medic. Okay. Uh, what's your priority in the first seconds of the mid fighter's pocket? Giving... Giving my demo man room to breathe, pretty much. Like, one thing that'll happen a lot is Brad will be standing over here, uh, getting close and trying to spam some stickies across, and I'll see a scout or a soldier start getting up on these crates, and that's when I know I have to engage them so that Brad can continue to do what he's trying to do, continue getting his spam off. Because the moment our demo man is shut down, most good invite teams will instantly become aggressive. They're like, oh, the demo man's distracted? Go. And we just crumble. So it's all about, like, um, giving space for your demo man. Yeah. Their um, current team. Like... For me personally, at least, maybe it's because I'm bad, but I'm always, I always have a very hard time doing a lot of damage or getting kills on this mid. So I make most of my goal just giving the people on my team who are better at this game than me room to work. Cause like, like everyone on my team is better DM than me. So it, it's better served if I just give them a place to do, you know, to fight people. If I can help support them with some spam or like, just by me standing up here. If me standing up here gives us more control of the mid, even if I'm not doing damage, I'm gonna do it. Okay. Um, how to counter a very aggressive team in a mid fight? What would you like suggest? Um, I mean, the first answer is counter aggression with aggression. That sounds like it might not work, but TF2 is a very aggressive game, and frequently, if you try to counter aggression, with a lot of passivity, it won't work that well. At least, that is, if the aggression is well-timed. Um, the other thing is, I guess aggression on the mid-fight, the embodiment of aggression on this mid-fight would be a soldier doing the gunboat's jump, where they fly and land on your health kit, or when they come out of sewer and just double bomb your medic off of that. Um, if you know that soldier is coming, if you think he's gonna be coming, just chill here and kill him when he hits the ground, and then move forward. Um, aside from that, uh, I kind of don't have this map figured out that well. Um, and we actually do tend to crumble against really, really aggressive teams. Uh, so far, our best answer has just been counter their aggression with more aggression. Right. Um, when pushing last with equally... Ubers, uh, should the roamer push with the combo and take some of the uber to deal damage, or should he like try and flank? I think uh, the roamer should not come into the combo at all. I think he should definitely be coming in through a different entrance. If I'm if I'm in here, it's going to be me, my medic, and either a scout or a demo man. That's already three people coming in through one choke, taking one uber. If our roamer's here as well, it's gonna be awful. Yeah, you don't um, want to have like 20 people in one place. Yeah, if I'm coming in through there, I want my roamer to be coming in from somewhere that will take eyes off of us, or somewhere where we can take eyes off of him. I don't want us to all come in from the same side. I want them to have to look around. Like, if they're holding here, and we're pushing there, I don't want my roamer to come in here or here. Because I can just look here and see all three of those. I want my roamer to come in over here, 
so that they can't see him. Or if they look at him, they can't see us. Okay. Um, when defending with a heavy on last, should your pocket act as a roamer or still like he should try to stick with you and protect the medic? Um... What was the question? <laughs> when defending... Wait, wait, okay. When defending, okay. When defending with a heavy on last, should your pocket act as a roamer? Or still try to stick with you and protect you? Okay. I don't know why that took me so long to understand. English is hard. <laughs> um, I mean, definitely I'm okay with letting the heavy take more of the pocket heals. Uh, if the heavy wants to do that. I'd say if we have a heavy, I would have my heavy, my scout, and my medic here having the scout build uber. And I'd probably be... Um, I'd probably be holding close to a choke, actually. Um, like, I could park myself here and put some spam around. I could hold over here and peek and do some damage. I would definitely play a bit more of a roamer role if we had a heavy on defense. Um, should the pocket leave the medic for a brief time during mid-fights and try to deal damage to the combo, or just stay and protect the medic from flanking scouts or, like, slash roamer? I definitely think it's important for, uh, especially on this mid, for the pocket to be a little bit jumpy, for the pocket to not be afraid of leaving his medic. Um, for one, there's often someone else who can do a better job with the heals that I would be taking. Um, like the demo man could probably do more damage with the heals, or the scout could probably do more damage with the heals. And it'd, it'd be more beneficial if I was jumping around and pushing people back. Um, or, you know, just going deep, just really just going deep with my bomb and giving my, the rest of my team as much room to work. I, I generally... Uh, pretty much the most successful mid-fights for me are the ones where I get up here, push them back, and then I'm able to have another really good bomb once the rest of my team is ready to get aggressive. Um, the ones where I'm forced to sit by my medic and just protect him constantly generally aren't as successful. Okay. Uh, the next question, um, how should you decide to settle a sensitivity whilst, uh, like, playing soldier? For example, would you change, I mean, would you have a high sensitivity for a roamer and, like, a low, uh, sensitivity for a pocket? Or does it not matter at all, like, Um, I, I think... I think there's something to be said about higher or medium sensitivities being more beneficial for Soldier. Um, I used to play Soldier with a 12-inch 360, which is pretty darn low. Um, and like, I don't know, it would take me forever to rocket jump. It was hard for me to track scouts. My flick shots were always really slow. Um, and you know, if you can make it work for you, then you know, make it work, but ever since I've switched to a 6-inch 360, I've noticed it's just, I mean, it's just, it's easier for me to rocket jump, it's easier for me to continue turning and following a scout that is trying to kill me or my medic. Um, but really, ultimately, sensitivity is all preference. So it's all up to people. Yeah. Okay, uh, th the last question, like, from the thread would be, uh, what exactly is problematic about pushing into last on process compared to other maps like Badlands, Granary, uh, Snakewater, etc. Okay. Um, I mean, for one, sometimes it can be difficult to check for sticks without eating a ton of spam. Like, I to check for these stickies here, I really have to sometimes expose myself. Like, if we're trying to push very fast, this is something that'll happen. I'll shoot a rocket there to clear that. Shoot a rocket there to clear that. And now I've got to reload and try to get through here. And there's all this spam coming on this ramp. And it's like, oh, God. And then I can just get juggled in this doorway. Oh, the worst thing in the world is when you eat a rocket to the feet and this happens. You just keep getting juggled up against the top of the door frame. Uh, that's one of the problems of these low doors. They can work against you. They make it easy to clear sticks, but you can get juggled behind them. Um... But I'd say the biggest thing that makes us hard to push isn't necessarily the design of the entrances. It's more the design of the area where the defenders can hold. Um, 
it's pretty easy to like fall back up here and buy a lot of time. Like you can spam them at the chokes, juggle them, and then fall back. And even if you have like a 30% disadvantage, you can make that up. Like it's pretty easy with a little bit of spam and a little bit of positioning to make up a 30% disadvantage. On a map like Badlands, if someone ubers in with a 30% advantage, you're probably gonna lose. But on this, they can just come up here and they can still defend the point. And they can still build their uber in relative safety. Um, or how easy it is to fall back into the spawn. This isn't my spawn, but you get the idea. To fall back into the spawn and get healed and rotate out the other side or just abuse the doors to peek in and out um, and still defend the point. This is one of the things, like this is why this is different from Badlands. From this door, you can defend the point. You can't do that on Badlands. You have to walk out the door and walk quite a ways before you can shoot the point. On this, a demo man can just constantly peek back in the door and keep resticking the point. Um, and I think that's a major part of the reason why this map is hard to push. But the best way that I have found to counter it is to not worry about kills so much. Like, if the entire enemy team backs up there, or backs into resupply, just cap the point. This thing caps fast. Just shoot the stickies off and have, like, three people get on point, and you'll probably cap it before they kill all of you. There have been a lot of times where we won a round on process without getting a single kill. We ubered in, they all retreated, I shot the point, and we just capped. Okay, I guess that was it. Okay, so we're gonna get to the uh, chat questions. Okay. Uh, the first one would be, when holding before pushing last, what is a good position to hold and build? Um, I like to... Before pushing last. I like to hold kind of around here. Uh, it gives my medic escape options. My medic can back out that way. He can back out that way. Um, he's relatively safe in here from a bomber. Um, it's just a good safe place to build. And that lets us keep an eye on the chokes without exposing our medic. Like, I can peek these chokes and put myself in danger of a sniper, but Sean Bud can be back here healing me, and nobody can see him. Um, then the second question would be, where should a roamer be at the mid fight? Who should be- oh, wait, he did ask it already, I think. Um... Yeah, do you like choke or the IT computer or sewers like for pushing? It is entirely dependent on where our buffs are and where the enemy team is. Um, is he talking pushing to or pushing mid? Uh, well, he said for pushing, so let's say like pushing to middle and like from middle to a second point. Okay. When I'm pushing into middle, um... Yeah, either way. I mean, I, like... They kind of all have their advantages. I'd say sewer is the one that I do the least. I really only push sewer when I know that there's something in there that I can kill. Or if there's too many people in here. Like, if they have two people in here, I'll probably push sewer. Because it's pretty easy to kill them. Um... Other than that, choke and IT are the ones that I do the most. IT is nice, but it has its problems. Um, you can kind of surprise people and cut their team in half. Like, if they have some people holding back and some people holding forward, and you come out here, bam, you've cut their team in half. And you're already in such a good position. You've got high ground, you've got a health kit. It's really nice. But it's really hard to clear the stickies, and it's really easy to get spammed in here. So you kind of have to make sure that you can get in clean. You kind of need a distraction. You need somebody distracting choke, you need somebody distracting sewer. If they know you're coming IT and are ready for it, it very rarely works out. Just because of how easy it is to lock down. Like they can put stickies here, and then they can put more stickies here. And while these ones are easy to clear, you just shoot the ground, these are much harder to clear. You can kind of shoot that, and it'll clear some of them, some of the time, but it, it's it's definitely dangerous. Uh, as far as choke goes, um, I'd say it's probably the safest most of the time. It's a relatively open choke, and it's got a relatively open ceiling. You can generally get in pretty clean, and it's got good walls for you to engage on targets, uh, do jumps to engage targets. 
Um, the important thing, though, is you have to get out of this choke really fast. Like, you can't, like, slow push, dilly-daddle, check stuff really carefully, because it's so easy to eat a ton of spam here. You have to really get through this choke and get into them quick before they can just back out and spam you to death. Okay. Uh, the next question from Case is, Defending last, how do you like the roamer pushing into their lobby at the start of the uber? Um... I mean, that definitely could be good. You can, you can catch people off guard. So like, they uber in... Let's say like... Say they uber in... From bats. And your roamer pushes in over here. Yeah, the chances are there's gonna be someone here that your roamer can catch off guard. Uh, so yeah, I'd say I like that. Go for it. Same guys asking again. Uh, how far up should the roamer peak on last holds? It, it really depends on like what your team is doing and what your uber situation is. Um, I mean, if you've got full uber advantage... I don't know, you can probably play a little bit close, but of course be safe. You know, if you're getting down to like 100 health, back up and get healed. You don't want you don't want to be the guy that dies. You don't want to be the pick that the other team gets that lets them push, you know? Um, but I, I, I'm really, really, really a fan of holding really close to the chokes on this map. Because, I mean, they're all pretty small doorways, and it's really easy to spam people and juggle them. Um, and that also, of course, prevents snipers from being as effective if you hold really close. Um... I don't know, I definitely think holding holding pretty close to the chokes and not letting anybody get in for free is what I would do. Okay. Um, next guy, uh, question is from Chaastus, I think is his name pronounced. Uh, defending mid, with what intensity should the pocket pressure the pushing team? Or is it safety of your medic of uh, almost importance? Um, I definitely, like, kind of like I said before, I think it's important to control this high ground and focus on applying pressure to the enemy team. Um, kind of defending my medic and being super, super cautious of him is, is really more of a secondary goal. My primary goal is aggression and giving my team room to work. Um... Next guy is asking... Rhetorical Anarchist, uh, when is the best time to off-class NG? <laughs> best time to off-class NG? Um, I haven't seen NG that many times on this map. I've seen it run defending last a couple times. Uh, and it can be pretty successful, but the problem is, is that the gun is actually quite easy to spam. Um, because the chokes are all so far away from the doors that usually no matter where you put the gun, it's going to be vulnerable from some place where it can't shoot back. So you wouldn't say that like it's really that useful? I definitely prefer a heavy or a sniper over an NG. Okay. Uh, then like since we don't have any more questions, I'm just gonna ask you, I'm not sure if you replied it already, but uh, like what would you prefer, like using the default like rocket launcher or the original? It is completely preference. I've used both extensively. Um, Season 11, I played the stock. I played with the stock rocket launcher. Season 10, I played with the original. Uh, before that, I played with the stock. And now this season, season 13, I'm using the original again. My reason for switching was um, I had a really hard time dealing with scouts who liked to get really close to me. Um, I would try to track them, because I don't really do a whole lot of flicking. I do more kind of tracking sometimes. Um, I would try to track the scouts... And when they moved to my left, I would always shoot behind them, because the rockets come out of the right. So anytime a scout started going left, I would never hit him. My rockets would always be behind him, and I kept dying. And no matter what I did, I couldn't change my aiming habit. So I just changed the original, so that it was easier for me to fight scouts in close quarters. That's really the only reason I changed. It's a pretty minor thing, but it was killing me so often that I deemed it, uh, I deemed it good to try the original. Uh, what about uh, soldier crits? Lamafish is asking. Is it like possible? Can you do that 
on this map? Can you use for this? Um, it definitely, like, it, it can be. Because there are some times where the enemy team holds really close and are really stacked together. Like, pushing into two, this whole area is so great for a soldier crits. Like, if you crits right around this corner and shoot a rocket there, you're probably going to get a kill, at least. If you shoot a rocket on the point, shoot a rocket there, anywhere in this hallway, I think it's really good for a soldier crits. Um, that said, most of the time it's probably d better for the demo crits, but, you know, if Sean switches the crits and critses me on this map, I'm probably going to feel pretty comfortable with that. I'm probably going to do okay. The exception being if, like, we're pushing mid and the enemy team is over there, uh, I'm probably not going to do anything. <laughs> okay. Uh, Kazgo Poo is asking, extending on Lama's question, when is a good time, like, to run crits in general? When would you say, like... Um, honestly, just whenever you think you can get away with it. Whenever you think you can, like, really surprise them, and when you think you can prevent them from playing the uber game that they want to play. Uh, I actually think crits is kind of underutilized. Brad will disagree. Brad is not a big fan of crits. He definitely prefers regular ubers, but... In Season 9, Sean Bud and I experimented with running crits more than we ran Uber. Mm -hmm. And it kind of worked. Like, it's just, you just have this constant aggression. And even if they Uber, you can just look at their flank and kill the other three people that aren't Ubered. Yeah, and then we push once Uber is done. Yeah. And yeah, like, I don't know, I really like crits. I think, I think it should be used more. Uh, Brohana is asking, when there is a stalemate on mid or like a second point, what is the best area for the roamer to bomb, uh, like, from to break that stalemate situation, basically? So what should the do roamer do, you know, like, to kind of change the situation? And Just come in wherever the enemy team, like, isn't looking. One thing that happens to us so often when we're defending this, when we're defending two and it's a stalemate, is somehow I'll look up and Tagarung is just in the sky. And I'm like, how the fuck did he get there? We were watching everything, I thought. But he just, like, finds the two seconds where one of us isn't watching IT, or one of us isn't watching Sewer, or one of us isn't watching Choke, and he just, like, flies in through the sky. He takes these really, really tiny windows of opportunity to come in really fast. Um, and generally, that's set up by, like, spam. Like, say you, they have scouts in Sewer. Your team is holding mid. You want to push two. You know the enemy team has scouts in Sewer. You have, like, your pocket and your demo apply a bunch of pressure over here and hit some spam. You have your scout peek in and do some spamming over here. And when you know that guy is spammed out, going back for health, you have a pretty good chance of being able to come in and do shit like this and just get right on the medic. Mm, like, we don't have really any more serious questions, but there is one. Uh... Lama Fish is asking again if you're going to make Beam's frag video, because I know that you're amazing. I myself am a fan. <laughs> um, if I get any good kills this season in matches, uh, yeah, I will make another video. But um, I don't know. Like the last, the last like frag video that I made, um, it was really short. It only had three clips because those are the only three good clips I got the whole season in matches. So uh, I don't know. Hopefully I get some good kills and I can make a video, but uh, no promises. Okay, and I had actually one more question. I'm not sure if you said it before, but what do you think about C-tapping? Like, could you explain to people that don't really know what C-tapping is? And... Okay, um, crouch tapping is when you literally tap the crouch key for a second. You see how when I tap crouch... I don't actually, can you see that when you're spectating me? Uh, yeah, I can see it. Okay, like... I crouch down, I get closer to the ground, but it doesn't slow me down at all. For some reason, when you are in that state of you're crouching, but you haven't slowed down yet, it makes you take more damage and more force from your rocket jumps, which makes you go really far. Um, so if you tap crouch and then do a rocket jump, you do shit like, I mean, I don't know if that was a C-tap, that might have been. I'm kind of shitty that wasn't a C-tap. I'm like really bad at C-tapping. Because the timing is kind of weird to do, and my muscle memory for my hands, like, refuses to fucking let me do it. But if you can C-tap really consistently, um, definitely go for it. I personally don't really try to C-tap that often. I just do regular rocket jumps. But um, if you look at a soldier like TLR, 
TLR C taps almost all the time. Uh, Banny, when he plays Soldier, I'm pretty sure he C taps a lot, and it's it's scary. Like they can fly at you from so far away so fast. Like I basically, I mean, I wish I could C tap really consistently. I should probably practice it more. Okay. Uh, so I think that's gonna be it, cause like when I started the stream, like I had troubles already, and it's been yeah. like two hours now. So okay. uh, I'm gonna close this. Uh, I would like to thank you, Lang, for coming over and you know, like, uh, like saving me out since my internet decided to go off. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. <laughs> so it was thanks kinda, for uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, it was kind of cool that you were able to stream. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna get the VOD uploaded on the YouTube channel. Hopefully, Lang will be able to send me his VOD as well if it was yeah. recorded. Hope it was recorded. I can I can rip it off of Twitch. Okay, that's cool. Uh, so like I said, when I started the stream, I'm not sure when I'm gonna do the third episode because I'm going to hospital on Thursday, and I'll probably be away like for a week or something. So yeah, of course you can like join my uh, Steam group. Uh, follow me on Twitter and like follow me on Twitch TV. Like announce everything there. So for example, if you join the Steam group, uh, you can basically. I mean, you will get spammed each day because I keep making an announcements, like whenever I, I go live or whenever something like really important happens. So, yeah, there you go. You can just follow me and join my Steam group, etc. And then I'll see you hopefully like two weeks or something. See you.